ladies and gentlemen, the President of the United States. My friends, this is not a fireside chat on war. It is a talk on national security. Because the nub of the whole purpose of your president is to keep you now out of a last ditch war for the preservation of American independence and all of the things that American independence means to you and to me and to ours. After taking office in early 1933, President Franklin D. Roosevelt went on to be the only president in American history to win four consecutive terms. He played a pivotal role in leading the nation through two of its greatest crises, the Great Depression of the 1930s and World War II. His New Deal reform program and its legacy led to a significant expansion of the federal government's role. Over the course of his presidency from March 1933 to June 1944, Roosevelt addressed the nation in around 30 radio broadcasts, speaking on a range of topics, from banking to unemployment to fighting fascism in Europe. These speeches, known as the Fireside Chats, offered comfort and renewed confidence to millions of Americans. Franklin D. Roosevelt, a young rising politician from New York, contracted polio in 1921 which left him paralyzed and confined to a wheelchair. Despite this setback, he pursued his political aspirations and was elected as New York's governor in 1928. Four years later, he secured the Democratic nomination for president and went on to win the general election with 23 million popular votes, surpassing the Republican incumbent Herbert Hoover's 16 million votes. Although Roosevelt collaborated with speechwriters, he played an active role in creating his speeches, overseeing early drafts and rehearsing revisions until he had nearly committed them to memory. He was known to enjoy ad-libbing, which explains why his speeches' official versions differ from the recorded ones. When Franklin D. Roosevelt assumed the presidency in March 1933, the Great Depression had already engulfed the world and America's economy had hit rock bottom. With over 13 million people unemployed, banks failing, and industrial production at a standstill, the country was in dire straits. In his inaugural address, Roosevelt aimed to instill hope and confidence in the nation, famously stating that, the only thing we have to fear is fear itself. Let me assert my firm belief that the only thing we have to fear is fear itself. During the first few months of his administration, referred to as the 100 Days, Roosevelt introduced an extensive range of measures to Congress with the aim of jumpstarting America's economic recovery. These measures would go on to form the foundation of his groundbreaking New Deal program. As one of his first actions as president, he declared a bank holiday, whereby all banks would be closed until they were declared solvent after undergoing federal inspection. Following the bank holiday, Roosevelt urged Congress to devise fresh emergency banking legislation to assist the struggling financial institutions in America. On March 12, 1933, He took a significant step by giving a relatively casual speech on the banking crisis. My friends, I want to talk for a few minutes with the people of the United States about banking. In his address, Roosevelt commended the public for their fortitude and good temper in accepting the difficulties of the banking holiday. The holiday and the radio broadcast appeared to have had the desired effect as the feared bank runs did not happen when the banks reopened indicating that some public trust had been restored, at least for the time being. In the 1930s, when television was not widely yet available, almost 90% of American households had a radio. Recognizing the power of mass media to connect with the public, Roosevelt delivered roughly 30 radio speeches from March 1933 to June 1944. His topics varied widely, covering domestic concerns like New Deal economic policies, drought, and unemployment, 
as well as international issues such as Europe's fight against fascism and America's military advancements in Europe and the Pacific during World War II. Despite the popular belief that Roosevelt delivered his speeches beside a fireplace, he actually spoke behind a desk fitted with a microphone in the White House. The term fireside chat was coined by CBS reporter Harry Butcher in a press release before Roosevelt's May 7, 1933 speech, and the name stuck as it perfectly captured the comforting and conversational tone of Roosevelt's words. Roosevelt was careful to use simple language, concrete examples, and analogies in these chats, ensuring that the majority of Americans could easily understand his messages. He often began these evening talks with the warm greeting, my friends, and referred to himself as I while addressing the American people as you, creating a personal and direct connection with his listeners. During many of his speeches, Roosevelt drew inspiration from the founding fathers, Abraham Lincoln, and other influential figures from the nation's past. He ended each fireside chat with a recording of the Star Spangled Banner reinforcing his patriotic message. These chats, with their reassuring nature, helped to boost the public's confidence and in turn Roosevelt's approval ratings. They also played a role in his numerous election victories, even during times of economic hardship and war. In conclusion, Roosevelt's innovative use of radio allowed him to communicate directly with millions of Americans, and his intimate and reassuring tone made the public feel like he was speaking to them personally. You people must have faith. You must not be stampeded by rumors or guesses. Let us unite in banishing fear. Together, we cannot fail. Through his chats, Roosevelt covered a wide range of topics, including the New Deal, unemployment, drought, and America's military progress during World War II. The chats were incredibly important during the Great Depression and World War II. Roosevelt's speeches provided comfort and hope to Americans during times of great uncertainty and crisis. His informal, conversational tone made his policies more appealing to the public, and his ability to explain complex issues in simple terms helped build public support for his policies. Roosevelt's fireside chats also helped to solidify the president's position as a leader who is in touch with the American people. By speaking directly to the public, he was able to build a personal connection with Americans that helped him win their trust and support. Additionally, his use of patriotic themes and appeals to God or Providence helped to foster a sense of national unity and purpose. Overall, Franklin Delano Roosevelt's fireside chats were a groundbreaking use of radio that allowed him to connect with Americans during some of the country's most challenging times. Through his chats, he was able to build public support for his policies, reassure Americans, and position himself as a strong and capable leader. Let us know your thoughts in the comments section. If you like this video, be sure to hit the thumbs up button, subscribe for more videos like this, and turn on the notification bell so you don't miss any future videos. Thanks for watching the History Stop, and we'll see you next time.